several books of the Iliad and the Odyssey, Antigone and Oedipus. Actually, we completed those. The Knight's Tale. My favorite. Selections from Paradise Lost and Genesis from the Old Testament. Was that interesting? Why do you ask that? Because in this country, it's almost impossible to teach the Bible as merely a great work of literature. Every time I try to teach it that way and not as the ultimate word of God, I'd spend the better part of the lesson arguing with every fundamentalist in the class. The biggest problem I had this year was with two young ladies who belonged to some group called God's Assembly or something to that effect. That must have been a hoot. It certainly was. I spent two whole classes tiptoeing around the controversies. We ended up wasting half the allotted time before I decided to move on to the next topic. Oh, that's too bad. Didn't you have the same problem with several students a couple of years ago? I faintly remember you ranting and raving at the dinner table. We're on the topic of the current crisis in Germany. Now, the anti-foreign hate groups using the same propaganda that the Nazis used in the 30s. Well, this inevitably led to the discussion of World War II and the Holocaust. Would you believe two of the students revealed that they believed the Holocaust never happened? Is that incredible? I can't understand it. It's just ridiculous. Where do they get these ideas? From their parents. Who else? My parents died in the war. My father belonged to the Communist Party. And when the Germans invaded Poland, he ran away because he knew they'd kill him. He would have taken my mother and me, but I couldn't travel. I was only five and very frail and sickly. He tried to convince my mother to go with him and leave me with some friends, but she refused. After the war, I tried to find him, but it was impossible. We lived in a nice house that overlooked the Baltic Sea. My mother, she used to sit by the bedroom window and read to me. She had such high hopes for me. When the Germans invaded, she knew we were in grave danger because of my father's politics. She explained to me that the safest thing to do was to hide in a small closet in the basement. We had a friend, a wonderful woman named Eva, who agreed to look after the house while we were in hiding. We filled the closet with as much food and water as we could, and then Eva blocked the closet door with some old furniture. Three days later, the Germans occupied the town, and several officers requisitioned our house for their own personal use. Eva was ordered to stay on and take care of the house and feed the officers. Somehow, she managed to sneak food and water to us every few days. To pass the time, my mother whispered poems to me from memory. I remember all of them. She fed me and gave me my medication as best she could. She herself was becoming ill. Apparently, she was always afraid that the Germans might keep Eva from coming back for a while. And so, she saved almost all of the food and water for me. She had always taken care of me. She had always given me everything I ever needed or wanted. And now, well, now it 
seemed like the most natural thing in the world. And then, our worst fear. Eight days went by and Eva didn't appear. By now, my mother was very ill. Even I knew that. There were times she appeared barely conscious. There was only enough food and water for five or six days, and she wouldn't touch it. She said she merely had a fever, and that the only way to get rid of it was to avoid any nourishment. And I believed During the next few days, she passed in and out of consciousness. She kept saying over and over how proud she was of me, and that all she wanted was for me to have a wonderful life. That's all she thought of. I pleaded with her, begged her, please, don't die. <laughs> Three days after my mother died, the Germans left, and Eva was able to rescue me. The, the last thing my mother said to me was, I love you so much, darling. Make a sound without hear you. My mother shouldn't have died that way. Christina shouldn't have. They should 